Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your pick a card reading focusing on messages from Pluto. I have been feeling like making this video for a while, but I kept getting delayed, putting it off, and here we are. Now I think this is the perfect time because we have the full moon in Scorpio in a couple of days and Pluto is already retrograde. And I just gotta say, I haven't peeked at your cards yet, I just dealt them out, but I did take a sneak peek at the bottoms of all of these decks, and they are all major arcana. So, I think we've got some shiz going down. Go ahead and pick your cards, pile one, two, three, and four, and I'll see you in your reading. Hey pile one, welcome to your reading. Something very interesting is coming through here. I didn't expect to see to see this. First of all, your bottom of your deck is the High Priestess. I always view the bottom of the deck as the energy that we're moving away from, the energy that is our past paradigm that maybe it was good for us, maybe it wasn't, but whatever the case, this is our base, our starting point, but also the thing we're leaving behind. We're continuing on from this. So you have this foundation of leaving behind the High Priestess. And I feel like this is a more, like the dark aspects of the feminine, magical, mysterious, you know, yin principles like Kali energy the the destructive the self-centered the contracting when you you know when you think about the yin yang and you think of the yin the black side when you think of all of those you know the things that we would call negative those kind of feminine energies i feel like that's kind of where you were sitting not that that was the totality of your experience or your personality or anything or and not even that that was bad but there was definitely like a shadow feminine you're moving away from like your shadow feminine is how I'm going to put it. I'm kind of getting a Sagittarius South Node vibe. Not that all of you have Sagittarius South Nodes, but it's that kind of a little bit of self-centered, self-focused energy. And you're getting ready to move on from that almost in the way that a smoker finally decides they want to quit. You're like <laughs> you're nine of wands. You are feeling tired of it. Almost like you're tired of yourself. Almost like you're tired of your own shit. And we've all been there. We've all just had to sit down, look ourselves in the mirror and go, oh my God, I can't deal with myself anymore. <laughs> uh, like I, I, I understand this guys. Uh, when I was going through my Saturn return, I had to sit down and look at myself and just be like, Look, Shy, you are just a hateful bitch. Do you want to live the rest of your life like this? Or do you want to learn to chill the fuck out? That that was a conversation I had to have with myself repeatedly for three years. Um, I don't feel that like that is exactly what you guys are going through, but on some level you're you're kind of tired of dwelling in your own shadow, tired of dwelling in to a certain extent passivity. But I also feel, you know, with this high priestess that you guys are also like you're really psychic you're really in tune with the other side you can see through the veil you guys are not matrix humans you guys are special special people <laughs> um but maybe you've been on like kind of ungrounded and that has been causing you problems in your physical everyday life a lot of the time the most spiritual the most psychically skilled people can't even ride a bicycle for example like and certainly can't do their taxes can't pay their rent on time um and like i was saying like that kind of sagittarius like the shadow side of sagittarius is also kind of what i'm feeling i don't know i don't typically associate the high priestess with sagittarius i don't know why i'm getting that but that is definitely what keeps coming to mind people who just are so fixated on getting what they want at the cost of anything else that they end up destroying their lives. Of course, that is not, that is not the totality of Sagittarius. That is, you know, the shadow of one of the most lowest manifestations of Sagittarius. <laughs> so yeah, just, just to give some examples of where I think you're coming from, that is in your past, but you're, um, 
moving on from that because right in the middle of this you have the ten of swords this is all getting closed out you are finishing a cycle and it's almost more that you guys are killing it have you been feeling that you are like pounding your past self into the dirt <laughs> or shooting your past self full of arrows maybe you've had to do maybe because you you were so unfocused on your physical reality, I think you guys were more focused on, I don't know, just upper chakra stuff. Like, there was definitely some level of lack of grounding in, in your life, which is, you know, don't beat yourself up about that. We're all like that, basically. <laughs> but Six of Pentacles, on some level, you guys are starting to balance the equation you're balancing the equation you were really really starting to feel that things were just out of whack and you had to get it together to get everything back into balance and in order to do that you had to close a cycle you had i feel like you were in some kind of energetic loop some kind of like almost emotional feedback loops You know, for me, I get really, I have a really active imagination and I feel my own internal feelings very keenly. And those kids, I can get stuck in a loop of, you know, imagining things and feeling my feelings and just loop, 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 imagination feelings, imagination's feelings. And that is a really horrible loop to be in because I'm leaving out my thought processes and I am leaving out my sensory reality. So in order to break myself out of that loop, I always need to tune into my rational mind and think thing I need to think about things <laughs> instead of just imagining them and feeling them and I also need to pay attention to my physical reality with my senses you know get grounded into the earth that's how I break myself out of those loops so if you're in some kind of internal feedback loop um uh, well I think you guys either are right now did recently or are about to you know your your timelines on this can be a little fluid but um some kind of loop uh is going to be breaking and uh, luckily for you guys, your uh, future trajectory, your near future, just your future kind of forecast energies will say the Emperor and the Nine of Pentacles, which is so much more grounded, so much more in control, shit together. This Emperor has, has come to balance out Six of Pentacles. He is balancing out your, your High Priestess. Balancing out your High Priestess. I'm going to put her here. So... You guys will absolutely be able to get into a place where you can embody the higher evolutions of the High Priestess, where you are just permeable and psychic and in tune with the feminine. I don't know why, but the, the word that keeps coming to mind is rebirth, the feminine rebirth. I don't even know entirely what that means, but that is... That is like looping in my head. So you're having some kind of feminine rebirth, perhaps. And this time it's going to work out better for you. You'll be able to have a more mature expression of your feminine power because you are also go going to be balancing your masculine power, right? Masculine and feminine needs to be in balance in order for both of them to be empowered and uh, functioning properly. When, for you know, for example, when the when the feminine energy doesn't feel grounded doesn't feel secure she goes you know that's when we get kali <laughs> that's when we get the destruction the devouring mother the and on a more human level just catty women who are sulking and being manipulative right when i i have a perfect example of this actually i know a couple right now who they are they've been together since they were teenagers you know now they're in their 40s and I mean, but they've had like this torted love affair on and off again. They each have kids with other people and yada, yada, yada. But, but anyway, you can tell that they're just, they really love each other and they're really meant to be together. But right now they're getting divorced because he is not making enough money and that's making her feel insecure. And she needs to feel that her man is providing for her and giving, you know, giving her that sense of security. And on his side, you know, she is holding back sex and is putting conditions on him and isn't loving him unconditionally. So now they're getting divorced because they can't because they can't figure out their own cycles and they can't communicate this to each other. So, you know, 
the feminine needs to feel secure and the masculine needs to feel unconditional love, I would say, on some level. Like, that's how these two energies can work together. And you're going to be, because you, like, cleared something, you balanced things out and cleared some some kind of cycle. And now you're going to be able to balance your feminine mag your magical feminine power and and your grounded masculine power and maybe you've been making specific steps in order to get your career your living situation your life surroundings because the emperor has his shit together like he rules his kingdom and his kingdom is well ordered so you know if you guys have been like couch surfing or just barely making the rent or never having enough money to live comfortably, you know, paying credit cards with other credit cards, that kind of stuff. You, you're about to get that together because that's what the emperor can, can gift you is just security and sovereignty and stability. And it, it is paired with the nine of pentacles. Look at this nine of pentacles. So your personal sovereignty and this is this particular card is the reason I, you know, read this spread as your internal alignment and your internal rebalancing of energies because the Nine of Pentacles is your individual, you know, financial and physical abundance, your individual sovereign luxury. It's not the Ten of Pentacles. That the Ten of Pentacles shares the wealth with everybody. The Nine of Pentacles is you. It's just this one figure here. Just this one figure enjoying all of their nine pentacles. Um, but, you know, the alternative, this is just, you know, and this is just a representation of energies. For some of you, this could be playing out as two people. This could be a relationship spread with um, the high priestess and the emperor, you know, manifesting as two different individuals. But I think for most of you, this is an internal thing. And especially since this is a message from Pluto, for me, Pluto is, especially with this, if you guys are watching this when I post it and Pluto is still retrograde, or maybe you're even watching this in some future retrograde, Pluto retrogrades to me bring the trans the transformation of Pluto into inside the individual, inside your own like emotional body where you have to work through your own crap. He's Pluto's going deep inside, picking up the sludge. So, yeah. You guys are closing out your past bullshit that you personally got sick of. You are rebalancing and getting your life together. The Emperor, and this is going to work out really, really well for you with this Nine of Pentacles. And I think that's what I'm seeing here, guys. I just noticed, I was so into your cards that I just noticed that the Weed Whacker has been going on uh, outside my window for most of this reading. So I'm really sorry, guys, if that uh, the camera picked that up and you had to listen to that the whole time. <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. The bottom of your guys's deck is death, which is cool. Seeing as this is a message from Pluto and Pluto rules Scorpio and Scorpio is associated with the death card. So you guys are going through some kind of death and rebirth transformation, making like the Phoenix. If you guys are watching this right around the Scorpio full moon, good luck to you. I bet you are feeling rather emotional. I honestly hate Scorpio season and I hate the Scorpio full moon. I just, I've already been feeling for days just, just feeling so Scorpio and nah, just butthurt and emotional and not liking it. And I don't say that to make Scorpio people feel bad because I am Scorpio rising. I have Pluto conjunct my ascendant and that gives me a really prominent, I would say, <laughs> Scorpio placement in my chart. So when whenever I talk like bad mouth Scorpio, I'm talking about myself. So please other Scorpio people don't uh, take that too personally. <laughs> so, and interestingly here, we have the King of Swords, 
bookended with the Queen of Swords, but the King of Swords is in reverse. So when I saw that, I, I immediately felt like a blip. I, I don't know how to make that. I don't know how to express that. It's like you're going along. You imagine like driving down a road. You're just driving along. You're going along. And then there is you go over a really unexpected, like a hill. You go up a hill and you don't realize because of the way, you know, just because of the optical illusion of the road, you don't realize that after the hill is like a drop. So the car actually <laughs> goes, gets airborne for like a second and then it drops and it's like, boom, and you lose your stomach because of the sudden drop. And you also are worried about your suspension because your car just fell out of the air. And it's funny because there's actually, I know there's a road like that kind of around Seattle that people drive other people down when they don't know it's coming. And it's it's a big, like, it's a local joke. But yeah, that kind of just when, think about, or I guess the simpler explanation would have just been a roller coaster. You know, when you hit the, the top of the roller coaster and then you go down, it, it's, it's that. You guys are going to be peaking. I feel this King of Swords in reverse, he is losing his emotional control. He is losing his cool. King of Swords is always the cool guy. He is completely level-headed. He does not lose his temper. He does not lose his control. I feel like he's really enlightened in the, you know, in the sense of the Western enlightenment, not the, not the Eastern enlightenment, but, you know, 18th century France enlightenment, intellectual enlightenment. That is the King of Swords. And right now he is losing it. He is losing his grip. Exactly what I was saying about on the Scorpio full moon. Some people really feel that and really just get angry at other people and feel like everybody is attacking them and everything is some somehow construed to be an attack on them and they just feel butthurt and just really emotional and just can't help but pick a fight with everybody and are going to be crying and, you know, depending on how you express your anger, maybe... Uh, throwing stuff, uh, hopefully not punching things. Uh, but if you're going to punch something, you know, aim for the pillow or something. <laughs> Screaming in the pillows. Just losing it. Totally losing it. And uh, I would say, you know, yeah, that, that sucks. But that's also just part of the scorpionic spikes, uh, you know, and circular transformations. And if you notice people with, you know, prominent Scorpio in their charts are are like that. They're always just, you know, we're people with prominent Scorpio placements have a particular relationship with suffering. I'll put it that way. Um, and that can suck. Those of us with the Scorpio uh, highlighted Scorpio placements can really feel like uh, personally attacked because of that. And we can really identify with our suffering and our pain pain because it's just like pain right saturn saturn people associate saturn with pain but saturn isn't really pain saturn is just responsibility and struggle but pluto is pain and suffering and it's not always clear like why but if you ever noticed uh like pockets of energy that don't have any scorpio in it or you know I, that could be represented by humans that don't have any significant scorpio placements in their charts they Sure, they, they have an emotional stability and they don't seem to suffer very much in life and they don't certainly don't identify with their suffering and they don't feel pain and they don't get butt hurt. But they also lack a certain amount of intensity, like a certain amount of emotional vitality about them. So I would say it is worth it. <laughs> it is worth it to have your Scorpio um, because it gives you the the chance to be born again. Look, Because look at the middle of this, okay? So you have your emotional upset. You have your... You have your death, you know, you have your transformation and you have your emotional outburst where you just completely lose your shit. And I understand, guys, if you're like really embarrassed, you realize that, you know, you're 30 years old and you just threw a tantrum. <laughs> um, you know, try to try to just ride that out and uh, you can clean up the mess in the morning. It, it, it'll be OK. It happens to the best of us. But in the middle here, Princess of Wands, which is the Page of Wands, Ace of Cups and the Sun. So... Yeah, all of this momentary upheaval and just spewing of pain is going to have a purpose. And he here, I, I really think the idea of clearing and purging your emotions is applicable because you purge, <laughs> you purge out your pain, you bring it up, you express it. It's kind of like 
you know, when you're sick and then, and then once you're feeling better, well, now you still have to cough up all of this phlegm. And sometimes you got to cough for like a few weeks and it's just, you keep thinking, well, you know, I'm not sick anymore. Why am I still coughing? Well, it's because it's still coming up. I feel like you're going through this purge in order to cough up this emotional metaphysical phlegm you've got, you know, deep down inside of you. So it's all coming up. And the Princess of Wands with the Ace of Cups in the middle, it is to give you a new emotional start that is going to be helping you get a new spark. You're going to be, it, it's almost, I almost can imagine like dead wood. It's like you've got dead wood in your lungs and you don't want to be woody, right? You don't want to be like a wooden type of person. You certainly don't want wood in your lungs. You want to have a much more fiery spark and also like a watery emotional fluidity about you the princess of wands and the ace of cups so that that's that fire energy and that water energy so you're going to be coming into a new place of passion we also have the sun so your sense of self is going to be revitalized your solar plexus is going to be revitalized and this could be manifesting with you know gifts coming from the universe what kind of this could be some kind of career opportunity, some chance to just get outside on the beach. Maybe, <laughs> maybe quarantine will be lifted where you're at. Something, something good is coming your way. The sun, for me, I only ever see it when there's going to be some kind of tangible burst of good news, some kind of tangible benefit. Something good is definitely going to be happening. Maybe you're, you know, Maybe for you, it might just manifest of you standing on a hilltop in the sunshine with your arms outspread, just feeling like, yes, like I feel alive. I feel good for the first time in maybe a really long time. But something like, look at her, look at her. You're going to feel like that. Something is going to be coming your way. Something good is going to be coming your way. And you will be more in tune with your emotions. You'll be more in tune with your passion, with your ability to feel and express love. Yeah, I know the, these... These cards for me are a little bit nebulous. I feel this energy can really manifest in many, many different ways. It's not specific. It's like a new a new beginning in your emotional body and your creative body. Yeah, maybe you, you guys are... This has something to do with your solar plexus and your sacral chakras. Getting that cleared out and being able to move on without them being clogged. I think that is what <laughs> this has to do with. And this is all going to culminate with you turning back into the Queen of Swords. She's going to be writing, you know, so you're going to have a little bit of, you're going to have this emotional outburst. You're going to go through this scorpionic upheaval and purging and all of this. But, you know, you're going to come back to yourself. You're going to be back feeling like your rational self, feeling more normal, feeling more stable, feeling more in tune with your rational mind. And it's going to be good, but it, you're going to be a little bit tuned down, you know, it's no longer the king of swords. It's going to be the queen of swords. So I feel like she is just a little bit softer than the king, a little bit more introverted. Maybe she keeps her thoughts to herself. The king of swords, I feel, would be sitting on his throne dispensing judgment. You hear my cat? She's she's not liking something. <laughs> Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, the King of Swords is sitting on his throne dispensing judgment and criticism. Um, you know, from a good place, he's trying to keep his kingdom organized. But the Queen of Swords, I feel, has more wisdom. Is a, She's not a very feminine queen, but she is more in touch with her feminine side than the king is. And more able to be in touch with the prince, with her, you know, the Princess of Wands and the Ace of Cups. I feel like she is more balanced. Yeah, and look, even the sun card here is feminine. So all, you're going to go through all of this and you're going to come out mostly like you were before. You're not going to be losing too much of yourself, but you're going to be more balanced, more in tune, more how you should have been in the first place. Kind of like Gandalf. When Gandalf the Grey, you know, falls, he goes through fire and water and hell and then he is reborn. Reborn as he should have been. He is now Gandalf the White. And it's that kind of transformation. You guys have to go through death and fire and water. Wow, I was just saying that repeating the lines from the movie. But yeah, we have death and fire and water and then being reborn. Uh, look at this white energy too. White as you should have been. So <laughs> that that's how I'm going to read that. Good luck on your transformation, guys. Don't let this skull get you. <laughs> because death is not, we're not talking physical death, we're talking 
rising like the phoenix or like Gandalf, whichever metaphor you prefer. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. I'm getting such a relationship vibe off this. This doesn't have to be a relationship for all of you, obviously, but I think just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to run with the relationship interpretation. And if this doesn't apply to a relationship to you, just, you know, translate the message. It's the same message. It's the same energies for, it could be your career. It could be platonic relationships. It could be your relationship with your inner self, you know, your subconscious, different aspects of yourself, your relationship with your physical reality with your spirituality, any, any number of things like usual, but I can't run through every single one of them. And it's such a strong relationship vibe on this. I think that is particularly important for the majority of people tuning into this, uh, message. So I'm going to run with that. And I'm sorry for the rest of you. Just try to, uh, relate it to your situation as best you can. So the bottom of your deck is the world tree. And this is the world card, but as you can see, it's, different than than usual and what i was really drawn into here is this little door this little elf door down here i feel like you guys have been in this maze you've been running around a labyrinth trying to figure out where the hell are you where are you going how do you get out feeling trapped feeling like you're going in circles just you know trapped in a labyrinth you finally made it to the door you finally made it to the door and you are entering the universe this tree is this is the world tree this is the universe once you go into the door bam, the whole universe is open up, to, is opening up to you. And this tree has deep, 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 deep roots and its branches reach way high, high up into the higher realms. So you guys are seriously busting out of some kind of trap, some kind of situation where you were stuck spinning your wheels for a long, long time and you're finally having the whole world opening up to you. And the reason I'm getting a re that this was that this trap you were in was a relationship is Knight of Eels, or sorry, Knight of Eels, Knight of Vessels, which in this case is an eel. Normally, the Knight of uh, of Cups, which is would be this Knight of Vessels, is an offer of love, you know, a new romantic partner, something like that, and we really love to see it, but you know. This card, it's an eel. I like you want to do you want to date an eel? Nobody wants to date an eel. I don't honestly <laughs> I can't get over whatever symbol other symbolism out there you might be sitting there going, "Oh, but there's all this symbolism about eels, you know, and they're supposed to be good and symbolize this and that." It's like, well, I don't know if I care right now <laughs> about that to me right now. This eel, this is nasty. This is gross. Nobody wants nobody wants an eel. If my knight of cups came and he was an eel, I'd be like, no, like that's, that's gross. I don't, I don't care. You know, if you're an eel, I can still respect you in your own eel fashion, but I don't want to hang out with eels, right? I don't want to hang out with eels. That's what it is. You can go off and be an eel with all of your eel friends, but not with me. And, and so further on about why I think this eel was a sinister or at least unpleasant figure for you is Six of Stones exploitation. This is the Six of Pentacles, but as you can see in this interpretation of it, it is not a benevolent balancing of energy. It is a malevolent exploitation of energy where energy is being taken from one party to the other. In this case, you know, the land is barren, the land is dead, maybe even through the action of these humans. Maybe the humans have, you know, gone out and been humans and abused the land, and now the land is barren and dead, and they can't get any more from it. And now they are reaping what they have sown, which was, you know, poison. And now they are starving, and now they are begging. So these two cards together, this is some kind of toxic relationship. Absolutely. And maybe you kind of, maybe you kind of thought it was okay for a while. And, you know, or maybe for some reason you really were in love with your eel. And then you woke up one day when you realized you were these people, you were like them, you were in poverty, you were in a barren landscape, and you realized you were starving and you realized you were dating an eel. <laughs> that kind of thing. Just yuck. And you are just Finally, finally, you've had enough. 
because you were finally able to get into the world tree. You got out of your labyrinth where you were confused and you are busting out because you are realizing that you don't need them. You don't need to put up with their shit. You don't need to live in this barren landscape. You are demanding that you get the respect you deserve. Nine of bows. This is like the nine of wands, but honestly, this deck, its interpretations are most of them are different enough that I don't really know if it's useful to compare it to the regular tarot. This this nine of bows, this guy, he is standing up for himself. I mean, sure, he wants, you know, he's a hunter. He's a hunter for his tribe. And yes, he wants the re respect, first of all, of nature because he goes out there in order to survive and to feed his family. He needs to be a successful hunter, right? So it's like he wants the respect of his you know, his prey, <laughs> the animals he has to kill to, in order to survive. But he also wants the respect of his community, you know, for putting in all of this work, for putting his life on the line in order to, you know, feed everybody. And he's finally saying, okay, look, you know, I deserve respect for what I'm doing, but he's also not afraid to earn it. This guy, like, he's not just standing there like some kind of 15 year old, you know, <laughs> demanding respect when, you know, most 15 year olds don't really deserve a lot of respect. Some of them have earned respect. Sure. Most of them. I mean, I certainly didn't. Let me just say, I certainly didn't deserve respect when I was 15, but this guy absolutely has earned his respect and is now demanding it. And that's where you're at. You're finally starting to stand up and be, I don't need this relationship. I don't need this creepy eel guy. I don't need to live in this barren landscape. I can stand in my own power and I can take care of myself. And now we got the shaman. The shaman doesn't need to depend on anybody else. Sort of like this, you know, hunter guy, but it's almost like he has magical sovereignty. He knows how to communicate with the spirits. He knows how to communicate with nature. He knows how to be one with his environment. And he knows that he is the most spiritually advanced person in his tribe. He knows how to guide others. He knows how to see, uh, he knows how to see things that other people can't see. His eyes are wide, wide open. He can see into the void. He can see into the past and into the future. And he can see, he can travel. He can travel astrally and he can connect everything together, just like the magician bringing in all elements, all, but the, the shaman, I feel it's more like he's bringing all worlds together, um, for the benefit of himself and everybody else. Um, so these energies go really well together. It's multi on multiple different, on multiple different levels, you are gaining your sovereign foothold and the respect you deserve. But at the same time, you're not getting selfish about it. You are You're working for the greater good. Both of these figures are working for the greater good. And this whole process you're going through ends in Seven of Stones healing. I think this goes both ways. With the Shaman card, you are also, you are both the healer and you are also being healed. You are recovering from that situation with the eel and the the poverty, the exploitation. You are healing from your exploitation, healing from your poverty, healing from your bad relationships. But through that, you are also the healed healer. You can, you can be either of these figures here because in order to be a healer, most healers have to go through, you know, their dark night and go through their own personal healing. That is how they learn to heal. You heal, you have to heal yourself, yourself first before you can heal others. So let's see. Yeah. Let's go. Draw one oracle card for you guys. Which one's it going to be? Grand Trine Blessings. This goes beautifully with that healing card. Yes, guys, whatever you've been through, whatever toxic past, whatever poisoned past, barren past, it's all over. Going into the future... Working through this, whatever kind of Scorpio or Pluto transit you're having, it's this is all going to be for the best. You're, you're coming into your time of blessings. Beautiful to see that triangle there. 
I think that's the end of your guys' message from Pluto. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Paul Four, welcome to your reading. The bottom of your guys' deck is temperance. So you guys are learning that being chill, chilling out, actually makes you stronger. I feel that in the past, you guys might have felt that in order to be strong, you had to be a ball of fire. That in order to be taken seriously, you had to express your emotions and your opinions like so, so loudly, just putting yourself out there all the time. Or that in order to have an, like a valid emotion or a valid feeling, you had to express it all the way. That like the more you cared, the more you freaked out almost. Um, I'm imagining somebody who maybe your mom, you know, just imagine somebody who maybe your mom gave you some kind of like goblet or some kind of gup, like some kind of dish, like a crystal dish. And eventually somebody comes along and out of their careless stupidity, they break your mom's dish and you completely lose it. Be and even though deep down, you know, you it's, I mean, yeah, you're upset that they broke your dish, but it's not really that big of a deal. You know, the dish probably wasn't completely irreplaceable. You can probably buy one just like it. And, you know, your mom's pretty cool. She won't really, you know, you know, lose it on that. It's not like you broke a priceless family heirloom. It was just, you know, a sentimental dish, but you completely go nuclear on this person who breaks the dish it, because you might've felt that you have some kind of thing with your mom and you have some kind of, and that dish really symbolized it for you. So in order to prove to the universe or to yourself that you care so much about your mom and this dish, you had to completely freak out, like have a volcanic reaction um, when that dish was broken because that was your way of showing how much you care. And it's, it's that kind of thing. Um, but now you're, you're realizing that you're, you don't need to be that, that expressive and that overbearing and that explosive in order to in order to be strong and that on some level you can actually be stronger and feel even feel stronger feelings and even feel deeper feelings you know maybe you're starting to realize that the feelings you were feeling were kind of surface level fiery and you were like yeah, like fiery on the surface, but deep down inside, they had like a heart of coal. <laughs> but now you're going to be capable of much more deep feelings, deep, deep depths, depth down into the deep, deep water, all the way like permeated by your experiences, not just having them be fiery on the surface. It's like you were compensating. Um, you Maybe you felt a little hollow inside, or maybe you felt like you didn't actually care about anything. So to compensate for that, you had to make everything be an incredibly strong overexpression in order to prove to yourself and everybody else how much you actually cared. But so now you're tempering and tempering, uh, exactly, exactly tempering, like imagine a blacksmith making a sword. The, the, the metal is, you know, red, red, hot, red, red, hot. That's how hot it had to be in order to be malleable, in order to be hammered into a shape and be sharp. And then he plunges the blacksmith, plunges it into the deep, cold waters and that quenches it, that tempers the steel. And then now the steel is shaped. Now the steel is strong. Now the steel is hard. And now the steel can be put to work, right? If you don't like the sword metaphor, I mean, blacksmiths also do the same thing with any kind of metal. It could even be decorative, right? <laughs> so yeah, you are tempering, you are becoming, you are finding strength in calmness, in, in stability. And this is really good because you guys have been going through the moon with your illusions and the ten of wands, which so a certain amount of emotionality and disillusionment, I almost feel with this moon paired with this ten of wands. Yeah, this and this also goes with with this temperance. I feel like your emotionality got to the point where even you got tired of it. This is a similar message to pile one, actually. So if you were torn between pile one and pile four, uh, there you go. Maybe you got tired with your lack of authenticity. Maybe it's the lack of authenticity with others 
But there's a certain level of illusions with this moon. I'm really feeling the moon coming through with the, the illusory archetype right now. And with the Ten of Wands, you are tired. You are done with it. You are so done with it. And you're like carrying it off, you know, about to like dump it off in the, at the dump. You're, you're just, you're done. So really learning to stand in your authenticity, in your true authentic strength, and maybe realizing that the self you were expressing to the world before wasn't truly you and maybe you had been stuck in that expression for so long you didn't even realize that it wasn't you you were identifying with everybody else's perception of you and you got confused and you thought their perception of you was your own perception of yourself and i was thinking i've actually been thinking a lot about this uh when stuff like that happens it's not just that you you know lack a sense of self and a lot of the people dictate your life it's actually and there's an energetic thing to it. Um, I don't know if you guys ever feel, can you feel the energetic field? Sometimes we feel it when we're falling asleep. I mean, if you're already really psychically developed, you already know this and you can feel into it whenever, but ever feel like there's some kind of, I think of it as the energetic field that you can tap into and you can feel everybody's expressions, all of their thoughts, all of their feelings, all the energy they're emitting, creates this this field around you know the planet and you can tap into that even if you're alone on top of a mountain you can still tap into it because you are a human here on earth and so everybody's projections about you are floating around in that field and you're sensitive to it and you pick it up and you were taking that in but no more you are you are done the ten of wands you are getting sick of it and you are dropping that all off and you're learning to filter that out and coming into a place of authenticity and stability and happiness with the four of wands in the middle here we have all of these yellow flowers yellow flowers all of these yellow flowers uh coming forward that's your solar plexus those are your your little mini suns your little internal suns these are all sunflowers you're getting so in tune with your, your, you've probably cleared out your solar plexus chakra, cleared, cleared out the gunk, um, cleared out everybody's projections of you. And it feels good. You, you're having this moment of satisfaction and stability in your sense of self. And I think feeling at home in yourself, realizing that your home isn't the place or the building or even other people. The home is your own soul, your own consciousness, your own self. You are all you need. And moving forward with the Six of Cups, this place of, this is also a homecoming. You have kind of two homecoming cards um, back to back. I don't know if some of you are having a literal homecoming. <laughs> this would really be, you know, some kind of family reunion, but maybe it's just a reunion with yourself. Are you getting reunited with the kind of version of you you haven't been in touch with since you were a small child, like since you were four years old, there's, I feel you really coming back, back to yourself. Some of you that might manifest as an external thing, getting in touch with old family members, maybe even getting in touch with past on loved ones. You guys are psychically sensitive. So you could be, I don't know, mediums. Are you getting messages from past on loved ones? But uh, it could also just be you finally feeling like the self that you were when you were a little kid or maybe even in your past lives. You're getting in touch with that version of yourself and it feels so good. It feels so authentic that your, your, your solar plexus chakra is like sprouting sunflowers. And eight of wands for this to end on that, things are about to change for you really fast. Now that you're sitting in yourself, it's like you're ready to take flight. This spread doesn't say where you're going to go. It ends on the Eight of Wands. So you're about to launch. You are about to launch in a big way. You're shooting arrows off. I feel like these, these wands are each maybe an idea or a possibility for you. Maybe you are exploring many different options. It's kind of like somebody applying to lots of different schools, right? This is somebody who is applying to eight different schools. They're just, you know seeing what their options are, seeing where they get accepted, and then they're going to pick their best best options. And, uh, of course, applying to schools and then getting it going to a school, that happens really quickly. I know to, you know, 18-year-olds, it feels like it takes forever and is forever. But to older, <laughs> older adults, we know that that period of your life is really, 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 really fast. So that's what this is like. It might feel slow for you, but, to, you know, really, this is objectively, this is happening quickly.
if we can say that time is objective. I don't know if that made sense, but you know, to everybody else and yourself in the future, you'll be able to look back at this time as a time of really quick personal growth and external movement. Okay. I think just two of these Oracle cards to just see if there are any further messages for you guys. To the sea. And thinker. This is really cool. This is exactly like, temp like these two cards combined, they're sort of a little bit opposite, but with the temperance card, it makes complete sense because temperance is about, just like I was saying, the water quenching the fire and bringing your fiery, passionate emotions down to a more reasonable, but also deep and useful level. It is tempering, it is balancing, it is weaving things together. And that's what we have here. To the Sea is all about being in flow with the universe, being in flow with events, following the synchronicities, knowing you don't need to force events, knowing that the right moment will come for you, that the right opportunity will come for you, and you can just wait for it and flow with it. And it will take you to the sea. It will take you to bigger and better things. It will take you to exactly where you need to go. You just need to trust in the flow and trust in the timing and trust that you know that you're trust that you're on point, trust that you know what you need to do. And it's just going to be good. It's, it's going to be good. And the thinker is a little bit opposite. It is being calm, level headed, being rational and not making decisions on impulse. It is, yeah, keeping a cool head under pressure and keeping a, a rational approach to your decisions. So if you guys can bring these two energies, this energy of being in flow with the universe and this energy of being cool headed and rational and thinking through your opportunities, there's nothing you guys can't conquer because that is, you're bringing, you're finding the balance there. A lot of the time, spiritual advice is all about, oh, you know, just be in the flow forever and never think about anything and just completely follow your heart and follow your intuition. And I mean, on one level, that's good. But, and I mean, that is good advice if it can be followed perfectly, but no one can follow their heart or follow their intuition perfectly. No one can always know the right flow of events perfectly. It, it's impossible. I mean, it's impossible for 99.9% .9 of us alive right now. Let me put it that way. We have to, in my opinion, balance that out with a certain amount of logic, a certain amount of reason. You know, how that's how I personally, this is how I personally operate, how so I've learned to operate. Because I, I have been to both extremes. I have been in a paradigm where I was completely nothing but intuition and heart, heart led. And then I was in a paradigm where I was completely rational and logical and did nothing that wasn't like data driven. But to be able to do both to follow the flow, follow your intuition, tune into your heart and follow the universal guidance, but to also, you know, allow your mind to do its job, to allow your mind to check the facts, allow your mind to go, hey, wait, 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 wait. Does this really feel right? Are you like, are you following your intuition right now? Or are you following your impulses? Your, your mind, allow your thoughts to do a little bit of fact checking, just a little bit of second guessing, not, not don't let your mind derail your intuition when you really feel deep down that your intuition is spot on, but just let your mind, you know, deal with physical reality. You might feel, oh, you know, my heart says sell all my belongings and fly to some island in the Pacific and live there. Your mind might go, hey, wait a sec. Okay, okay. If you really feel called to do something like that, let's do it. If that truly is your calling, we can do that, but let's figure out the best way to do that. Maybe that means waiting two years after saving up all of your money. Maybe that means you know, don't give all of your stuff away, <laughs> sell it. You're going to need that money to live on that tropical island. Um, you know, and so using both of those things, your intuition and your mind being in flow and creating flexible structures, that is how you temper. That is how you get the best of all worlds. And that is how you can just be the bomb. You can be so, so successful doing that. And you will, because look at the cards that came up. And it's all happening rather quickly for you with your eight of wands 
And I think that's the end of your message. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Hope to see you again soon.